So I've got a math problem for you today. So who you want to become plus the cost you're willing to pay equals the greatness that you have ahead of you. The way I say this is who you want to become because you've got to have some visualization and a goal that you want to achieve. The cost you're willing to pay is your time. It could be investment in yourself. It could be letting go of different people around you and your circle, making your circle tighter, really keying in on your family and what who or what really means the most to you. The way I want to talk to this that will resonate with veterans the most is about demotivation. Demotivation is what we experience in the military where we are broken down to the very <laughs> lowest point through exercise, through uh, leadership, through anything that we do in the day and how we train and especially how we do, how we, what we do when we deploy. It's tough and those are different attributes and cycles that make the military some of the strongest people. Now, do they understand this comparative to other professions and other people? We really don't. And that's one of the key things that understanding that and how you can apply that is key in the transition, going into your new pathways and really making yourself better. So one of the key pieces of this is understanding self-criticism. This is your own demotivation that you're telling yourself about. And it's important to be able to turn that and become more internal or intrinsic to yourself and how you motivate yourself. Because if you're allowing all of those outside factors to be pieces of demotivation for you, maybe somebody criticizes you or says something negative or you didn't do so well. So now you've got these pieces of feedback that are kind of pushing down on you and the de demotivation might be something that charges you in the short term, but you really have to focus on turning that around, making sure that instead of demotivation, you've got motivation inside your purpose to go towards who you want to be and the cost you're willing to pay to equal greatness. So one of the things to look at that as well is once you get yourself improved and your self-criticism is more self-reinforcement and self-improvement, then the criticism of others, the criticism that you believe you experience from outside of yourself, you're going to be able to shield against that. Because if you're taking criticism from others, it should really be something that you are able to turn around and learn, learn from. Even with any other failure that you have, you have to be able to learn from that failure. So not saying, okay, well, I failed to do that. Well, what did I learn in the process? This is something that I talk to my kids often because they feel like they failed. They didn't do a question right. And then I show them how did they succeed in other questions that they did? How did they find the answer? Each little piece adds up to becoming better and learning from what you do. People always say, learn from your mistakes. There's a good example from Einstein where he was talking to a class and he wrote on a board, he did nine times one equals nine, nine times two equals 18. And he went on and on all the way down to nine times 10. When he wrote nine times 10, he wrote 91. The class laughed and thought, oh gosh, well, Einstein, one of the smartest people in the world just made a mistake. He turns to the class and says, that's exactly what I wanted to prove. Now, sure, he can like write it incorrectly and see if he can get a laugh out of the class. He said, nobody gave me credit for writing nine of the problems correctly. And we all, you only recognized once I made an error that that was something to be critical of. So he already had the reinforcement internally that he could write those problems and be correct but he accepted a mistake he made on that 10th problem to improve himself and show that it's about improving your, and really the meaning that you can have inside that. So you have to be open to criticism because that's gonna make you stronger. So instead of letting that demotivation build into you and break you down, now you've got the internal motivation that's gonna build you up 
And every time there's criticism, you realize your mistakes. You know what it is. And when people recognize that in you, instead of breaking you down, now it's moving you up and up and up. Another aspect of demotivation is that it can be taken as dark humor. Like we talk about different morbid types of jokes. We are offensive to each other. And that's something that generates from the military because of the mindset and the challenges that we overcome and what we experience. And that's okay to a degree. But in my uh, professional experience with working in human resources, I saw a lot of veterans who were experiencing problems. And I knew exactly what they were going through. The other HR professionals that I was working with, they were afraid to work with these vets because they thought, oh gosh, they've got PTSD. They've got these issues where we, we just can't work with them, that we're scared of that. And I saw through it and I was like, well, this soldier, I know where he deployed because I, geez, I happened to meet one of the soldiers that I was in a unit with, uh, past the military and in my first job. No, no clue how we kind of like got to that point, but I, I knew how I got there, but it, I knew what he had gone through to that point and what he was experiencing and no one else could connect with that. So even a, a human resource related, uh, veteran, they're an important asset, I think. Now we weren't able to help him and a lot of what he experienced, uh, they ultimately wanted to terminate him. And beyond the termination, I, I found him and partnered with him and got him connected to one of the local nonprofits so that he could kind of get some help, uh, made sure that he was getting to the VA for his different needs, make sure he was taken care of. And that was on a personal level, not, not piece of like what was needed professionally that my company told me to do. So I knew that I had to do that for him. When you have that source that really motivates you and that's that's what motivated me it was taking care of the other soldiers that I had been in the units with that are veterans that I relate to their experiences. And I know that I can help them get beyond that because I don't want them to get fired a, but I also want them to become stronger. So one of the key pieces to that, when you're looking at who you can become and the cost it's going, and what it's going to cost, you have to have the belief that you have both those things. When you've got both those things, then you're able to do what you're able to, to get to greatness. If you think just you're going to start becoming who you are and the cost is just going to come to you, that's not true. That's not going to happen. You've got to believe in those things and start taking one step by one step and continue to grow. Now, one of the things that really separates us is the visualization piece. The belief is internal visualization. The way I can relate this is when we go on missions, we plan out every step along the way of what we're going to do. Hey, here's a river crossing. Here's where we're going to go, where we're going to go uphill. Once we reach the top, near the top of the hill, we're going to have security. So when we get over the hill, we already know what's going on beyond the hill. We know how many different steps and what the distance is and where we need to travel along a route to get to the objective. And we know exactly what we're going to do on the objective as well as the audibles, because we do battle drills and we plan for these things. Well, do you do that inside your professional experience beyond the military? If you don't, then you need to reflect back on that. If you want to be the best in what you do, you've got to put in the planning and the assessing and then tracking where you're going because we do compass checks, we do radio checks, and we do distance checks, and we create rally points all along our path to the objective. Now, one of the things I did before the military was competitive running. When I ran cross country, and when especially when I ran track, I would visualize running the 800 meters. Now, it's just two laps around a track, but what was important to me is to have the mindset of how I would perform in every almost every step of the, uh, the race, but at least along the turns, along the straightaways and how I would behave if someone was ahead of me, someone was coming up on the side of me and I would listen to music that was under two minutes long because I wanted to get to the point to be able to run 800 meters under two minutes, which was really going to separate me 
from a lot of the other runners. And so as that song would play, I'd, wa- I'd visualize, I'd look at the track and say, here I am. At this point, I hear these words and the lyrics in the song, in this music. And then at that point, I'm going to think about this and then that point. And so I'd keep doing that until I could really memorize the song as going through my head. And then as I'm racing where I'm going to be. And I broke two minutes a few times. And then in the uh, state meet, I believe I broke... I was down around 158 or 156 because it was a four by 800. So we were a little off, but it's important. All those different things. If someone had said, well, you only run over two minutes and oh my gosh. And I start believing that then I'm going to run over two minutes or I'm too slow. If I continue to visualize it and ensure that my mindset was set on breaking a two minute 800 then I'm going to do that. And if somebody says, well, you're going to run over the two minutes. Well, now I've got a reinforcement in the internal strength. And it's like, well, no, I'm not. I'm going to beat you if you're going to be in that race. Now, as we kind of wrap this up, make sure that you're focusing on the belief first and then taking actions for who you want to become and the cost you're willing to pay. And that is what's going to equal greatness. Now, different piece of the, pieces of this, is not, it's not just internal. Start using the cost that you're going to pay as what type of VA benefits are really going to help you accelerate. Look at your GI bill. If you need more education, look at the VRME system. If you need more professional development and different assets beyond education to help you grow. And especially look at the different therapy options. I use the VA for uh, therapy and stuff, and it really helped because it helped me dive deeper into things that I had experienced and re- help realize, you know, what my choices were, how I responded to that and to not let that hold me down anymore. So those were demotivational things that were in my past that were still weighing me down. And now I'm stronger myself. I learn, I apply, I continue to go and you can too. So take that demotivation and turn it around and then continue to grow, continue to go, and go win the day, stay on your path.